Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and this is going to be the first in what will hopefully become a series of small lectures on game design and level design in particular. And in this first lecture I will start to look at positive and negative space and how to use it in your level design to make more interesting as well as more open and dynamic areas. And I have two small problems that I will also be discussing. RCR syndrome which I first came upon in Horace's book on level design, which is more a book on level detailing, and massive building syndrome, which is th something I noticed myself doing, and which is also a consequence of not looking enough at negative space. And RCR syndrome means room corridor room syndrome, which is something a lot of beginning players run into, which looks a bit like this, where the rooms are just squares or rectangles, and then you interconnect them with narrow tunnels, which creates fairly stale and dynamic uh, multiplayer games. Even though most of the layout is, or can be, pretty good, it's the uh, lack of bigger chambers as well as interconnections between rooms that become stale. If you, for instance, would just extend the rooms, creating something like two bigger interconnected rooms, you would have much more open flowing gameplay as well as more interesting areas where people can fight and try to get the upper hand within rooms instead of just uh, within the overall layout of the map. And this is also something you will see in all, uh, or at least most of the Team Fortress 2 maps, which I will look at today. Uh, in fact, the only examples I can think of that's a bit, um, I don't know, maybe a bit uh, too reliant on narrow corridors would be Turbine, which is, in my opinion, uh, the worst map, or at least one of them in the current Team 2 official map pool. And massive building syndrome is just, uh, instead of having open areas on elevated parts of your map, uh, it's me creating houses everywhere there's an elevated area. I will create a building and then connect the building, which while not uh, necessarily a comp component of other mappers, uh, agenda. Uh, I don't know what to call, but I just create like a flat, uh, flat background layer, and then instead of having like a platform and then a house, a platform and then a house, I will have the entire thing composed of just different heights of the same building, and then create small openings for indoor play. And the first example we will look at is from Bad Water Basin. It's the last step of Bad Water Basin. And here you will see, I don't know who developed it, but I think it's a community map. But the basics of this area is this big block here. To extend the uh, the stairs here out into space, you just added a positive, positive space, uh, a block, I suppose, here. Uh, also, unfortunately, marked in green, but uh, yeah, something like this. So using this positive area here, which is a block and then the stair part, as well as having a negative uh, block here, I suppose, and then the stair part. It's not, the lines are not that good. I'm not an expert at drawing. So adding the plus part here and the negative part here will make this area much more dynamic and interesting. If you just look at the parts themselves, the biggest part of this area is just a big flat wall. And then there's this positive area. And it's all detailed with the same gray textured, with just a bit of red on it. The only models are these, uh, I don't know what they are, some sort of control thingy. And then the railings at the top and at the positive 
space. And it's still a really interesting area, which instead of using the 180 degree turn stairs, which are very rare in Team Fortress 2, they've gone for a 90 degree angle and instead trying to use more interesting geometry around them. There's no reason why you couldn't just have a platform and then open area below it. Uh, I'm gonna make a new layer. Like having this platform up here and then having this line extend into space, creating an open area using this, having open ground all the way. The gameplay would mostly be the same, even though it might be too powerful with yet another sentry position on this stage. For our next example, we have Gold Rush, the last step on Gold Rush, which is more to demonstrate the uh, massive building complex. Because if I would have made this map, I would likely have made it something like this, with big interconnected buildings with which cause really low sight lines, which is not something you should always be afraid of. For instance, in this area, as it's in the official version of the map, the defenders on the last stage, uh, as well as the second to last stage, which the capture point is just below the image here, or, yeah, a bit below it. And this open area here, it creates a space where the defenders can hang on a bit while still having the really open wide escape route uh, available in the house over here, which is not really visible. And with my version of the map, you wouldn't have that sort of uh, free flowing area. Every person going up to, into the high ground would have to pass this narrow choke point here, which it's not super bad, but I would likely have created another staircase here, something like this. Now, well, not super bad per se, it just creates a lot of uh, similarly looking buildings, and while not identical, they are really stale, and something like this really open wide negative space here actually adds a lot to the flow of the map, and even though it might play the same, uh, looking different is actually an important part of mapping, believe it or not. Our next example is still on Gold Rush, and it's the last step while it's the attacker spawn. And this is one of the most interesting areas, I think, and one that really shows the power of the positive space. Because um, in this rough uh, mock-up here, I've created the beginning of the map looking the same, and mostly playing the same with the exit here to the right. I'll pick another color. And the exit here to the right. Is the same, while uh, obviously a bit lower. The exit down here is the same, as well as the exit on the top right here, going out of the picture. The only big difference between this lower ground version and the official version is the uh, sightline here. Between, for players going between the spawn and the right side entrance, you could get sniped through the big middle tunnel. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. But what's been done is the official version has basically added a positive block here. This entire thing uh, is... it doesn't really change gameplay at all. The only thing it's done is uh, it's made a staircase up here, in the bottom right here, as well as inside the tunnel. They are all leading down to the same level as it's over here, just outside this port. This is the same, this is the same. And while the top area is obviously a bit higher, uh, the other solution with this mock-up here would create the same thing. It's just not as interesting as this one. So trying to find places in your map where you can add space and then create a few ramps around it can really add a bit of 
dynamic to how your map is played, while making it look a lot more, I don't know, awesome, but <laughs> pretty cool anyway. The next map is Pipeline, and this is something that shows how I'd want to make my own maps, because having the... Oh, I'm drawing on the wrong layer, sorry. Having the massive buildings on the sides here. Oops. Yeah, you get the point. These massive buildings on the sides, and then having the wide open area in the middle, makes this area look really cool in my opinion. It has the same 90 degree stairs as we've seen before. They only use it in another way with the main block here and then having another one added on. Something like this. And these areas, if I w were to have made them, I would have made like a door here, a big gap, big gap, and then just another massive wall covering this entire area. Turning the entire area into something that looks pretty much the same. So making sure to have open areas is a good thing. Even though they're elevated like this, it doesn't really matter because there are a lot of areas in TF2 that are raised. And it also creates something like this, where you have an additional detailing area. You could even have another one here, uh, but I suppose the uh, the mapper, I don't know, I think this is com a community map as well. But uh, having too much detail near the actual playable area can distract players from the important things. And this is just hidden enough and unlit that the eye isn't drawn too much, uh, too much towards this. For an indoor negative space area, I've taken an example from the ArcPass map and from my own example, because it's actually pretty hard to find good indoor negative space examples. So what I've done with this really narrow staircase, there's actually another stair below here, um, something like this, but I've just made this area a lot bigger. I have made this uh, hollowed out this area below, as well as add extra width to the room, because the other room ends something somewhere along this line here. So while this adds um, a sort of a dead end, which is so something you want to avoid in multiplayer scenarios, I still think this adds so much to the room that having this stale, just straight staircase map which uh, this isn't dynamic at all. The entire room has only one purpose, and it's to get from this upper level to the lower level in the bottom right here. So adding something, even though it's just detailing, and no one will probably ever go there, it, I still think it adds really much to the map. And I hear my English becoming worse and worse as I progress. But you can't get it all. I had a really clever point to make on this step as well. But, oh yeah, even if you'd made this entire area, just have a, a window down here, and then have created something like a level on top, that would still work in mostly the same way. I've just chosen the open route because I think it fits better with the rest of the team theme. theme theme that is going on around the other areas. So having some sort of reason for the open room to be here, like the door as well as some computers, is enough. Even though you'd probably get away with not detailing at all, like in these levels. It has some pickups, one model, the fence, and a bit of overlays going on. Then we have the start here which has one overlay, a few models, not very much detail at all. This isn't really detailed, it has some funk details on the edges. But in general, if you work a lot more on your positive and negative space, you will get away with less detailing overall. 